I'm going to pull up explain. So I want to share the whole screen here. So those of you who took 324 with me know this, know explain already. Explain is a software. It's a flight simulator software. Anybody in here not familiar with it? There's a few people. Uh, you can download it from xplane, x-plane.com. You can download a demo version. Um, let me write that on the board. I recommend a legacy version. Is that shown to the other class as well? I guess I didn't finish sharing the screen. Let's go back to here. Yeah, I guess they're still seeing that, right? So yeah, if you go to explain-.com, um, it will pull up and you can download a demo for version 12. Uh, if you scroll down, it'll say older or legacy versions. You can click on that link and find explain 9. I put you to the explain 9 because it'll run on pretty much any computer really smoothly. If you go to 11 or 12, it needs a pretty good graphics card to drive it. You're welcome to play with those as well. But this is the easy one. So the icon looks like this once you download it. Click on it and launch it. And I'll have to switch the screen share over there. Why is it invalid? Let me mess with this just a minute. Let's get explain going and see why I can't share that screen. There we go. So this is what Xplain looks like when it pops up on your window. And it will come up with a default airplane. And I want to change this to a different aircraft. So I'm going to go into the aircraft menu and pull up a triple seven which has been in the news lately for a bad reason, but everybody survived. You guys heard about that, right? It had an engine fire. And, um, well, we can go outside it and look at the airplane and it's a um, conventional aircraft with a wing that's swept, horizontal tail, vertical tail. And the flight controls are the elevators. You can see those moving. You guys can see this too, right? Yeah. So that's the elevator on the back. That's what we're talking about adding to the airplane. We're not moving the entire tail. And then the ailerons, you can see are outboard on the wings. And then there's also a flap that deflects inboard. So there's something here as well as out here that deflects. And this aircraft actually has a wing lift spoiler for maximum roll control that deploys when you command a high roll rate. And so that's a flap on the top here. Um, should have talked about that in 324 as well. Is that right? No, that's not 324, Never mind. And then I don't have rudder pedals, but if you look at the trailing edge of the vertical tail, it's connected to the ailerons and so it moves as the ailerons are deflecting and it also moves when the rudder pedals are deflected inside the airplane. A different type of aircraft, let's pull up a fighter. It's an F4.
There we are outside the airplane. And if we look at the elevator control on that, you can see that the entire tail moves on this airplane. And so they can achieve a lot stronger, a lot more powerful pitch control, but that hinge that deflects the entire tail has to be designed to carry the load of the tail. And of course it has elevators and rudders just like a conventional aircraft. And you can even see it here. Let me move over here. Uh, these airplanes are built with nose wheel steering. Most airplanes are notice that the nose wheel turns. And so if you're on the ground, the nose wheel helps you steer the airplane down the runway. So you can download this and play around with it. Um, I don't know if I can get it going without the throttle quadrant. I'm looking for, trying to remember what the keyboard shortcut is for throttle. Anyway, I'll do a, a better demo. I wanted to show you the, the uh, flight controls on different aircraft. Um, and you can, again, go to explain and download this. You can fly it with a mouse like I'm doing here, or if you have a joystick, you can connect that up and, and fly it with a joystick as well. So let's talk about the mathematics of adding the elevator to the airplane. So we're gonna trim the airplane with the elevator instead of the, the all moving tail. So the trim problem Uh, the first part of the trim problem is the lift equation. And we need the lift to match CL trim. Which is defined to be the weight divided by Q infinity s and if you have a load factor then you include that n so if n is equal to one you're just doing level flight if you're pulling g's n is greater than one then you're doing like a maneuver a pull up or a turn and if the load factor is less than one, you're doing a pushover or some other kind of negative G maneuver. So CL trim is defined to be this. It essentially says lift equals weight or lift equals load factor times weight. And then for lift, we use our math model. That's the lift curve slope times the angle of attack. And then since we've added the elevator, we have to add the extra lift we get from the elevator. And we also have modeled the lift due to the engine. Uh, I think we call this P, right? But we're gonna say this is small. The conventional airplane, the thrust is directed forward, so we're not getting any lift out of it. When we set CL equal to CL trim, we're solving the trim problem. The lift is not guaranteed to be equal to what we need to support the weight. It can be whatever you get out of the airplane, but we want the lift to equal the weight. So we're trimming the aircraft in flight, steady state equilibrium. So we will typically write trim on the elevator, an angle of attack that we need to get that trimmed flight. All right, the other part of the trim problem is that we want the total pitching moment to be zero. We talked about that last time. That means the airplane will not pitch up or down from its equilibrium flight. This is a static kind of a flight equilibrium. And we need our pitching moment math model
So there's the pitching moment, the pure couple. There's the pitching moment due to angle of attack. And then we add on the extra part we talked about last time. And we're gonna say that the engine's not creating much of a pitching moment either. So there's the elevator part. And we put trim on the elevator and angle of attack because this is the trim solution. It's not just any values. Again, you can put the elevator wherever you want. You can fly at whatever angle of attack you want. But if you fly at the angle of attack that gives you enough lift to keep you in the sky, that's the trim alpha. And if you have the elevator set to keep the airplane from pitching, then that's the, the trim elevator. It's nice here because we do have two equations and two unknowns. And so solving that is solving the trim problem. In all honesty, that looks pretty easy, right? But there's a lot of work that we've done behind the scenes to get to this point. Just getting A, we have to add the lift of the wing and the lift of the tail and combine that all together, shift stuff around, the stuff that multiplied alpha, right? And in fact, we have to redefine what we called alpha from alpha wing body. Um, CM zero and CM alpha, you guys just did that in the current homework. There's big formulas behind the scenes there. But if you know your airplane's wing size, tail size, locations, you have all the information you need to go into those formulas. All right, what's your favorite way to solve two equations and two unknowns? You have one? What's one way you could do it? Divide the equations. I'm sorry, what? I can't hear you. Simultaneous. That's what we're doing is simultaneous. What, how do we do that? That's exactly right. We have two simultaneous equations. What if you have 5x plus 6y equals 10, 3x plus 2y equals 5? How do you solve it? more than one way, so somebody throw out an answer. If, you, if I said do that and you started to do it on your piece of paper, what would you do? So you'd like solve this one for X, substitute in here, get one unknown right and get it. Okay, so that's one way. We could do a matrix, set it up as a matrix problem. That's what we're gonna do right now. Um, is there another way you've learned to do it that you don't do the substitution, but you do something you do what? So, so, so I think what you're saying is like you, like you can multiply the bottom equation by um, five thirds, right? And then you could subtract. So that's doing essentially substitution, but in an organized fashion. And that's what a matrix it really is set up. It, it allows you to do that in an organized fashion. So let's write this as a matrix problem. Um, so you guys have this down in your notes because I'm gonna have to switch over to this other screen here. So we put the unknowns in a vector, and then this is the stuff that multiplies all of those. This is easy because it's A goes here, CL delta E goes here, C here, CM delta E goes here. The CM zero we have to shove over to the other side. So we get a negative. And then the uh, CL trim goes here.
So now we could do, you guys learned Gaussian elimination, right? In 227, we could do that. Often with low dimensional matrices, there's Kramer's rule. You guys use that in statics, I think, right? So for this problem in the textbook, and most people just do Kramer's rule for this, It says the first unknown is two determinants. On the top, you take the matrix itself. Sorry, let's start with the bottom. On the bottom, you just put in the matrix. Right, so that's the determinant of the matrix thing itself. And then on the top, you take this vector, and for the first unknown, you stick it in here. Oh, sorry. It's not the unknown. It's for the first unknown, you grab the right-hand side, and you stick it in the first column. And then you keep the second column just all by itself. Keep it the same. So take the trim, the numerator, the numerator determinant, I do that right, that times that minus minus CM zero CL delta E. And then we're gonna calculate the determinant separately here. That's gonna be the determinant of that thing. Now I'm out of room, so I have to switch back. So let me give you a minute to get caught up while I erase the other board. Everybody in here caught up? All right. And then the second unknown it's the same deal, same determinant on the bottom. On the top, you replace the second column. So you get the same determinant here. In the numerator, we get I pull the minus sign out here. I actually switch the order, I guess. Let's make sure we did this right. Should be A times minus CM0, so the minus came out there for there. Not CM alpha, CM0. All right, so A times CM0, the minus sign comes out, minus comes out CM alpha times CL trim. And then the determinant is the determinant in the denominator. It is. Well, it's the determinant over there. It's A times CM alpha minus, A times CM delta E minus CM alpha times CL delta E. And that's how you solve the trim problem. So you're welcome, if you want, when we do numerics problems with numbers, take the matrix, Stick the numbers in and solve it however you want. 
but typically we'll use, often we'll use these solutions and you'll just stick numbers in the formulas. So we do have a few minutes left. We're gonna get started on an example. We won't finish it, but let's get started on it. By the way, these formulas are in your book on page 36. And I will often refer to this as the two by two trim solution. because it's a two by two matrix. So here we're back to our four place airplane. We're gonna do load factor one flying at 220 feet per second. The wing area for this thing was 174 square feet. The area of the tail was 30 square feet. The mean cord was 4.9 feet. LT bar was 14.3 feet. The weight at the current flight is 2645 pounds. Density of the air at the altitude we're flying at. This is sea level. So what we're really doing is we're saying we're flying at 220 feet per second, level flight, load factor one, with a weight of 2645 at sea level. That's our flight condition. Now we need the data for the airplane in terms of the coefficients. These are all per radian. So behind the scenes, somebody's done all the calculations. Well, we did them for this airplane. We went through and calculated all of these from earlier. So that you can see that if you know the geometry of the airplane and the airfoils that build up the wing and the tail, you can do this for your airplane. Notice that sometimes the book and I will write, instead of the lift curve slope for the airplane, I'll write CL alpha. And that comes from writing the lift equation. Like that. And you can see that, well, this thing is the derivative of CL with respect to alpha, right? You take the derivative of CL with respect to alpha, you get A. So it really is CL alpha. So often we'll call it that, just a different name. All right, so how much time do we have left? Enough time for you to calculate the determinant. So let's do that, and we'll need that next time. You have the formula. Hopefully you wrote it down. 
If you didn't, you got 30 seconds to write it down. It's over here. That's what I want you to calculate. I'm giving you 30 seconds because I got to flip back over to the other one to get the numbers. So give me some numbers. What are you guys getting? Anybody else got that? Check, check. Anybody on Zoom? You guys getting that? So that's correct. I feel like it's a game show. Correct. And then you say uh, aircraft trim problems for 200, right? Okay, so we'll continue on with this. We'll calculate the elevator and the angle of attack needed to fly at 220 feet per second at sea level for this airplane. 